welcome back to another Bible study with me through James. Today we're in chapter 1 verses 12 through 15. So go ahead and grab your Bibles. Real quick, if you're new here, my name is Faith. We've been doing this series here on my YouTube channel through the book of James. We're doing kind of like little verse section by verse section. So it's not quite verse by verse, but it's also not chapter by chapter. We're just doing like two or three verses here and there when they apply to each other. So my name is Faith, I'm a mom to two boys and I make Bible study videos here on YouTube, on my channel, if that's something that you might benefit from, which let's be real, I think we can all use more Jesus on our YouTube feed. You should definitely hit the subscribe button and go ahead and hit the like button if you like videos like this and leave me a comment if you have any questions throughout the like whole video, any prayer requests, any encouragement, any questions, leave those all below in the comment section. And if you're another Christian mommy looking for a fellowship, go ahead and check out our Facebook page. That was a lot of words. I started like spitting almost out of my mouth. Woo! Okay, I get myself pumped up. We're about to study James, yo. It's like 6 a.m., so I'm tired. <laughs> Okay, so again, today we're talking about James 1, 12 through 15. Go ahead and turn there, and we are going to dive in to this Bible study with me, the road James. So James 1, 12 through 15, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. All right, so that's our Bible reading for today. Let's start on verse 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Right off the bat, I think it's really easy I listen to like a lot of other sermons whenever I'm preparing for these lessons. And of course I read like commentaries and stuff like that, but a lot of sermons immediately jump to the imagery of pornography. And like a lot of people go there whenever we're talking about temptation. And I don't know why that is, but that's also like where my brain first jumped to. Let's think about some other ways that temptation is lived out in our own lives. Um, maybe it might be shopping for you. You might be just scrolling on Facebook and you see all these links to these cute boutiques to buy clothes for your kids and you're like, I'm really tempted to spend hundreds of dollars on clothes that my kids don't need, you know? Or maybe temptation is, comes in the form of gossip. Whenever I hang out with these certain people, I'm really tempted to say more about other people than I really ought to. Or maybe temptation comes in the form of food and drinking, whether it's alcohol or fatty foods, whatever it may be. Think about ways for a split second, just I want you to think about a few ways that temptation has lived out in your life. It may not be pornography, maybe something else, or maybe it is pornography. Um, so just think about that. Ask the Lord, Lord, what am I, where are my battles against temptation fought right now? And then especially in light of trials, I think we're all going through trials right now and temptation is only a larger beast in the midst of trials. Now, I'm sure you guys know I'm gonna say this at some point in this video, so let me just put it out there. We always wanna keep context in mind when we're reading the scripture. And so again, James 1, he's referring to the church dispersed. They are going through a lot of persecution. They're going through financial issues, health issues, and they're the early believers. And so he's talking to those that are facing trials. So if you're facing any kind of affliction of yourself in your own life, James is the book for you. And look what he does in these verses. Verse 12 says, blesses the believer that patiently endures temptation. Now remember, those are the early church believers. A lot of them have met Jesus. They heard his sermon on the mount. They heard him preach on the Beatitudes. And that's definitely what he is responding to from Matthew 5. The Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And so he's also saying, blessed are the believers who face temptation and endure. It's also really critical for us to realize that here, the word for endure and patience in verse three, in like our first Bible study, remember when we talked about persevering through trials, creating endurance, that same word of endurance and patience and perseverance is used here um, when it says, God blesses those who patiently endure temptation. That's the same word. But also, the same word is used for trials and temptation. That's the same word. The only way to know how to translate trials or temptation is just by context clues. Hey guys, so if you're enjoying this Bible study with me through James, 
I really encourage you to check out the other videos in this series. I'll link them up above. And I encourage you to pray about, think about if you need to share this video with somebody. If not, go ahead, like, and subscribe because I know you want to. And I really appreciate it. It does not go unnoticed. I'm super grateful for you guys. Go ahead and give me a comment if you have any questions about what we're talking about. And let's get back to our in-depth Bible study with James. And that, I think, really adds a lot of depth to our understanding of trials as well as our understanding of temptations because so often they come intertwined. When I'm going through hardship, I am often the most tempted to give into sin because I feel weaker or whatever. And oftentimes trials are an opportunity to give into temptation. I'm more tempted to sin. And I just thought that was a beautiful way of kind of illustrating that. I also just think it's a really important aspect to understanding this scripture, knowing that those words are the same words, endurance and patience and perseverance, as well as trials and temptations. I think that's really important to keep in mind as we read through this Bible study today. It further emphasizes this idea that trials and temptations are a battleground for believers. And it also works for the imagery that he uses next. In part B of verse 12, he says, afterwards they will receive a crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. That further kind of emphasizes that battleground aspect because he's talking about a crown of life. And let's dive into that idea because crown of life is thrown out throughout the Bible multiple different times and it kind of sometimes means different things. It's a really complex idea that I think a lot of people talk about and they don't actually know what they're talking about if you know what I mean. Say that graciously but you know what I mean. I don't know about you but I always get a little squirmy whenever people are talking about crown of life or really receiving any kind of crown, any kind of reward. I've lived too close to people who like refer to it way too often and act like they're really just following God for the rewards, like a crown. And it just like rubs me the wrong way to be completely honest. But let's be real. Anybody who's in it for the reward, for the crown, doesn't have a big enough view of heaven. I've heard so many people say, you know, you will be rewarded in heaven with a crown for blah, 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 blah. If that is what you're in it for, you don't understand how great heaven's gonna be. You know, like I think a lot of people need a greater understanding of heaven, but even more so like, if you really think anything can top the goodness of heaven, you've got something coming for you. Your mind's about to be blown. I heard someone, I wish I like remembered the name and the person because that would be very helpful, but I don't. <laughs> but they put it this way. Okay, so let's say Joe Schmo and Sally Patty, one of them gets the crown or gets a crown in heaven. Heaven is gonna be so mind boggling that neither of them is really gonna truly even notice that one of them has a crown and the other one doesn't. I don't deserve to step foot in heaven to even look at the pearly gates, never mind to work to try and receive a crown. Like it's really interesting because that's a whole sub understanding of scripture. Let's like look at the context here. Because if you'll remember at the beginning of this tangent, I mentioned that the crown has to do with a battleground, right? So what is he talking about here? It could be really easy for us to miss it here because we're not in the same cultural context as these people. But let's dive in, let's look. What did he have in mind whenever he said, afterwards they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him? What did he mean? The wordage here is of twisted wire and vine, like a garland wreath of twine. It was placed on the heads of the victorious athletes in the Colosseum. So when, you know, they were doing those like early Olympic games and someone would win, they'd put that crown on their head. It was a sign of being like a mighty conqueror. Like that is how everyone viewed it. James is thinking much more of that kind of crown, a crown that actually like dries up and crackles and breaks like in two days, but it's a symbol of a mighty conqueror. That's what he's thinking. He's not really thinking as much of a, like a kingly crown symbolism. You'll see that later on in the Bible, but scholars have noted that he's not really referring to like a kingly crown. He's more referring to more of like a, yeah, conqueror, a winner in a battle kind of crown. In fact, the crown of life, like verbiage, it's a lot deeper than just life. It's a life that can never be taken away. Living in God, a full, perfect life. Blessed existence in God. The crown implies a kingdom. Gill says this, called a crown because of the glory of it, which will be both upon the bodies and the souls of believers to all eternity. And as a suitable to their character, they being kings and having a kingdom and thrones prepared for them. So it's called a crown? 
for the nature of being adorned with salvation and the useful image of like a conquering king, which we are in Christ, princesses and princes, you know, daughters and sons to the one true king. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say here is let's focus a little less on the crown as a reward and more as a symbol for God's glory. It's really a symbol and it's meant to be this idea that God is gonna be glorified in you when you endure temptations you will come out as a mighty conqueror because of what God did in you and people can see you crowned with that fully living kind of life and then turn and glorify God. That is what he's communicating here. And I hope all that made sense. I tried to connect the dots there for y'all, but the actual verbiage, the actual cultural context here is a lot more of like symbolism and a lot less of like getting a gold hat, you know? But feel free to meet me in the comments if you have any questions about that. We can dive into the deep of that if you'd like. But overall, I think a lot of Christians do need to have a greater understanding of heaven and the fact that we are gonna be floored with God's glory, that we are not gonna be looking to the left and the right. We are not gonna be paying any attention to who's wearing what or anything like that. We are gonna be floored, falling to our knees, glorying, and God, praising God. We're not gonna be comparing ourselves of who has a greater experience of heaven. We're just gonna be floored that we even get to be there. Let's get back to our in-depth Bible study on James. So moving on, verse 13. And remember when you're being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong and he never tempts anyone else. This is a really complex idea and I often get lost in it when people start getting really, um, I don't know if it's like existential or like theor theoretical, but let's try our best here, okay? John Murray says, we're not subjected or abused with temptation to sin. No, we're not falling into sin either. Like we're victims of temptation. No, no none of that. Temptation is rather affirming our faith in Christ and progressing in righteousness. And it's important to note that God is not the author of that sin. Verse 13 is tricky because we see God tested Abraham in scripture, but God is never tempted to sin. God doesn't like revel in sin. He's not like nothing about sin is attractive to God. So he's not trying to tempt us. He's not trying to catch us in sin. He doesn't delight in sin like one bit. Basically people who say like, I couldn't help it. I was just like pushed into a corner. I had to give in to the sin. Or they say like, I'm just a weaker human being. Um, I'm just a human. I had to give in. Essentially they're blaming their sin on God. And that's what he's talking about here. Where the people who say it was unbearable. I had to just give in. They're doing that same thing. They're blaming it on God. Matthew Henry says, those who pretend they cannot keep from sinning wrong God as if he were the author of sin. Afflictions as sent by God are designed to draw our graces, but not our corruptions. The origin of evil and temptation is in our own hearts. Isn't that humbling? We tend to want to push it off on somebody else or on God. Well, you just made me too weak. Well, you just put the temptation in front of me, God. No, the origin of sin is in our own hearts. Gil also gives us this imagery of being in a crucible, being under the fire. And as gold is refined in the fire, so are we in the midst of temptations. Remember what John Murray said? He said that in the midst of temptations, uh, bah, 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 where I lost it, eh? temptation is rather affirming our faith in Christ and progressing in righteousness. So temptations are an opportunity to affirm our faith in Christ, to affirm that we're being sanctified, that we're being grown, that we're being strengthened by Christ. When you are tempted, when you feel pushed into the corner and really tempted to give in to sin, that is the opportunity for your faith to be affirmed in Christ, for Christ's work in you to be affirmed. And remember how this passage ends. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. I wanna encourage you guys, if you're a believer in Christ, if your heart is running after the Lord, we wanna be disgusted with our own sin and with sin in general and run the race that's set before us, running after God's word, what God loves, what is true, what is right, what is pure. And when you are facing temptations today, when you stub your toe and you're ready to let a word slip or when you're scrolling through Facebook and you get tempted to want to lust after some other lady's cute sunglasses or buy your kids 
clothes that they just don't need. Remember, these are opportunities for your life to be a testimony of God's work in you, a broken sinner, undeserving of heaven, undeserving of relationship with him, but he is still at work in you. So be encouraged. Your life, your temptation, your temptation to sin, your brokenness is an opportunity for the gospel to be preached. Ooh, I just spit. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on this Bible study through James. Join me next week as we continue Bible studying through James. I love these in-depth Bible studies. I love doing them with you guys. I love hearing y'all's like feedback and reading your comments and questions. So definitely leave those down below. I love it. Let's start a conversation down there. Um, and I will just see you guys next week in our Bible study with me through James. Okay, bye you guys. Oh, 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 oh,